in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn I'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of Christ Paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of God I'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of God celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned 
that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchman Nee would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people matter matter you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in the department and you say is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices, then it's a disaster. So you see people fight like politics. Oh, there is a vacancy. That vacancy is a deacon. And you see everybody coming to greet the pastor. Pastor, good afternoon. I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back. I've got you covered. That's a manifesto. That's, that's, that's political party. When Jesus was going to select people that he would train, the Bible says he spent the whole night. Jesus, the fountain of wisdom, knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing. You judge by the eye and see Eliab and say, surely this is God's anointed and God said, uh-uh, that's not how I choose. Oh. Look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose. 
you fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. Jumping and saying, look, just restructure our mindset and that's all. We have reduced the journey. And God looked at a tax collector, wicked man, very stupid people and said, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Saul is on his way to Damascus and God is looking at him, what an apostle. Killing people. You see, the way God sees, ba, let me teach you something. If you don't learn this, you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last yeah, I know that example. It came from uh, that, that uh, book. I, I know this man. I know the book he's reading. Yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam. But the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen. Never promote people emotionally. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. It says, Paul, a man approved, approved. There are illegal people. The same way there are jam centers. There are authorized jam centers. Correct? There are authorized hospitals. There are authorized drugs. And every authorized drug has a registration number. We call it NAFDAC registration number. Correct? Whether the drugs are big or small. Now, there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs. Put the drugs and put camels on them. Do all kinds of things. It does not make it legal. The fact that it was successfully smuggled. Those drugs in themselves may not kill. But they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called NAVDAC. That's how it is spiritually. You can get up and move and yet you have not been approved. Let me tell you. When people are approved on earth, they are assigned thrones in heaven. A throne is a symbol of authority. Those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces. That's why somebody can come, no rema, no revelation, but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words. They can speak, they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it. Brothers and sisters, I want you to preach to yourself. I receive grace to stay until he accredits me. I receive grace to stay. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I believe that is the spirit of God that just led me to communicate that I receive grace to stay. Pray. Oh, the head of department prayer is not seeing me. Are the leaders not seeing me? Is, is Pastor Femi not seeing me? Worship him. Are they not seeing me to give me songs? No. Never lift yourself. Stay. For when the season of appearing comes, let me tell you, no mortal man can stop you. Pray. I receive grace. Shabrakato sadabala karyatash. Lembreketo kasubri atakatash. Brato sobrende gashobrakatosia. Pray. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished. 
unto all good works i receive the grace to stay i receive the grace to learn i receive the grace to be built it may take time but i stay i receive grace i receive grace hallelujah hallelujah i will get to our, our teaching proper but i'm just stressing this oh god is calling you to be a kingdom financier and all of a sudden you are killing yourself trying to wear every cloth trying to buy every watch don't die for nothing god is calling you to be a prophet and all of a sudden you are forcing yourself to see you are not seeing anything this thing is not trial and error keep walking with god one day it will be like a joke you will wake up one morning into a portal a vista just opens up and say so this is what happens until then you force yourself you will see something and what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained i watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility i watch people and i see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit i see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by God as a leader, you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet. They may expect you to speak, but you have been so trained. Full of knowledge, yet silent. Look at Moses, a man who was heavily anointed, yet he never prophesied, he kept quiet. When the spirit on him came on 70 people, none of them could stand. Yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control. A lot of childishness that goes on in the body of Christ I'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is God God left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things I won't teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life 
you now want to destroy all run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions god told me i saw it so 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 our vision i saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations if you do not understand what i'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the lord i want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head pray but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head hallelujah listen to me there were two brothers in the bible born of the same father we understand called Cain and Abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly I have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions I have not entered as a person I don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment I need to step into because Benny Hinn will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things I now do and I get responses from heaven that I did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way he cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible said they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist it's from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until I step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata praka sodo bakariana balata. Being tried as gold. Being tried as gold. The gold of offering. The finest of them. Lekata praska da balada kasha da preska da balakasu. How is it grace? Grace. Swallow 
swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life hey a little bit a little bit soon your day will come stop working you changing Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little yeah, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn. Is that working? Stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was working now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says herein is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you 
just because someone acknowledged you and just called you daddy or called you mommy or called you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and saying leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here a little there soon your day will come start working you changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles, but there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Pray, pray. You are a prophet, but there are deeper levels. Come on now. There are levels of the prophetic where you create realities. You are an apostle, no doubt, but there are levels of the apostolic where you are giving the keys of David that can shut doors and no one will open. 
tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know North Korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you I will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good Greek and Hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of God prophetically you have all of God but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but I'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are I know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, oh, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move 
Lord, I thank you for this dimension and this grace. But then open more frontiers. Open more frontiers. And all of a sudden, a time will come, they will say you are Zeus or Hermes. They say this person, Pastor Alpha is not a normal human being again. What dimension is this? What level of grace and unction is this? I look at my life today. People send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of God and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever I get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if I continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a herbalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret God punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you to Please, let's not play games with this thing. If you are in it, go for it. Go for it. Fast for it. Pray for it. Study for it. Sit down for it. Sit down for it. Don't rush anything. I assure you, one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years. There's nothing called wasted time with him. Please sit down. You need to advise yourself tonight. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Ah, you are papa. Thank God. Myself, sit down. You are mama. You are deaconess. You are prophetess. You are apostle. You are this. Myself, sit down. Then you will command levels of power. And you will stand and watch what God is doing to you. And you will say, my God, what is this? Please be seated in Jesus' name. If I had my way, we would just pray till the service is finished. Because when the water is, the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot. As it's hot like this, you strike it. Let everything that is not God fly out of that, that, that making. Let's touch on something tonight.
but this message is really a message that struck hard i believe there are specific people this word is for god is asking you to wake up and eli is asking you to go back to sleep you have to choose who to believe At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not kind you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed. You know how a razor blade is? When you buy a new razor blade, you touch it on a paper. Pia! That's how it goes. That's what God is saying. You see God lifting all these our people now. Worship team. Gradually, gradually. When, when they all come to me, I tell them, go and sit down. Because... I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. Metals. There are machines that ride through metals. There are machines that cut stones. Do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those. Bram, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods. They will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. But when you buy it, you buy something, it will cut through rocks and pieces them. That's what God is saying to it. By the time you stand, in all the millions you are looking for, you will be so valuable. Oh, I, at my age, I think I should have built a house. Don't worry. Just stay. Somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal i teach you success principles we just finished success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble though. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes 
God doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery I've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you woe to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already ah, there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always God's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah I feel like praying no oh, this thing is on me I feel like praying I wish I were alone I feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is stirred don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep praying but don't waste it there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it it's like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that they were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body 
they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes god god is where you get the root word kabod glory the essence of god was vested in his image image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles munro will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were 
predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down there were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey i have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start leaving that script now this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together that is everything that came from the law until jesus it was a fair enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just calm down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment shout it say promotion say houses say cars say long life divine health bungalow just say everything i say duplex jeep prosperity hold on all those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda in themselves they are useless as far as god's eternal counsel is concerned their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this are we together so marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this car jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing let me tell you one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of god's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh i made wise financial decisions 
and God looks at you. Have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire? What do you think will be the basis? That means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass. And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living. Are we together? Teaching people to wear nice clothes, wear these, and people claim cars and claim all of this. All those things are only useful to the degree to which. So we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people. Not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself, but it has no kingdom bearing. Are we together? So someone looks at a jeep, just pass and say, hey, I claim it. And God says, okay, with respect to what? I say, God, just leave me. I claim it. I shall claim it. There are ways you can know immature believers. And there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well. Let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit. When a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate, that person is a mature believer. Are we together? If I ask you what are your concerns now, Many of us will lift our hands and say, money, money, sir. Direct money. Just money. Naira, like that. Pounds, dollars, money. Another person will say, child, child, this is my womb must carry a child. You ask the person, why are you so desperate for a child? You know what the person is going to say? Largely, all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my, my time have children. Some have two, some have five, some have ten. I'm alone. And that's the reason why the person wants a child. Are we together? Ask someone, why are you going to school? Say, are you joking? You want me to be hungry, Abby? Okay, if you are full, what is it for? Say, well, I'm for everybody is like that. I need to get a good job. Then another person says, I'm not getting a good job. I'm a businessman because he went to one seminar. Both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned. If you cannot state bringing your strong reason, let me tell you a chip. You've heard me preach this again and again. The dominion mandate remains God's desire. And anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of God. Both the hand and the heart of God. Supplies don't just follow your needs. They follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity, long life, healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this. Jesus said it this way 633 Matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom. He didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together? It is God's desire that we reign in life. And look at me. The concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people. Please give us Genesis 1.26 again. God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over. Let's look at it, please. 1.26. Let's hurry up. Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Read on now. Over what? The fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Over the cattle. Over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Notice that man was not mentioned. 
The dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men. When you do that, it's called witchcraft, it's called manipulation, it's an attitude of the Antichrist. Every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically. At a point in time, the people were angry. You know why? There's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated. They were designed to be led. They were not designed to be ruled. When in Bible days, when God wanted to punish either his people or your enemies, he gave you authority to treat them like animals. So he would cause them to become slaves. He would cause them to become servants. He would cause them to serve you. Not like a man serving somebody he loves. Subject them to slavery. Slavery had always been a way of God communicating his dissatisfaction. Either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies. Listen. The moment you find out an appetite to rule over men. I don't mean lead men. Rule over men is the spirit of the Antichrist. There is a programming that has come from Babylon that is at work in your life. Unfortunately, this system that we live in has designed people to live that way. Right from primary school. They clap for you and give you an award for taking first. Now, the idea is not whether you did well or not. The idea is that you beat other people. So they clap for you in their presence. Now their humiliation becomes your trophy. Are we together? As you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person. You see footballers, when they win, Arsenal, Man U, the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying. And that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people. It's an antichrist system. Now, of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools. Use it. The Lord help you. But I'm, we are examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So, you manipulate ways. They even named generators. I pass my. You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's. Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No. I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men, it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone. Are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest. Not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. And then he said, the, the Pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership. He said, but it should not be among you. Whoever wants to be great must be your minister, your servant. That the way up is to serve people, not truncate them. This is a good message for a pastor's conference. Because we live in a time where men of God in the name of spiritual authority, I believe in authority, have pocketed the destinies of other people. Some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast. Where a man of God takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket. He may be well-meaning, but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding. And they make it look like you leave me, you die. If I ask for money, you don't ask questions. If I come to your house and say rice, you say yes sir. Beans, yes sir. Everything, yes sir. And they use scripture and threaten people. It is antichrist. The moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will, you are subscribing to another system. It is not of God. What of workers in the house of God? You. You must be a worker. What of partners? You. Promise. This is your suit. You are going to start sowing 50,000. 
And the guy says, I'm, I'm your boss in office. I know how much I'm paying you, 50,000. That thing looks nice. It is not God's way. Hello? I know you don't like what I'm saying. We're teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their, their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses. People like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things. It was smart, you're a sociologist, answer it, but oh, that is junk. I'm sure wherever he is now, he has known the truth. Listen, let me tell you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today. He's worth your trust. Are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of take over must be well defined. Because for many people, take over means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful. Because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. No. It has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John, uh, Matthew chapter 6, we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray and then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm and he says, give us Matthew chapter yes, he says, after this manner therefore pray, our father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come your agenda that domain you have carved out for us we want your influence the word kingdom is a combination of two words a king's domain dominion the sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men ministry prosperity are only tools to help us say prosperity is only a tool divine health is only a tool so you see when you have these things the dominion mandate consumes you. They will never steal away God from your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He thought life was only about making money. When he now made money and built bands, he secured himself. Hear what he told himself. My soul find rest. In other words, I have come to the end of my pursuit. Nothing else to be done. And God says, no. This is a rich fool. Tonight, because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned. Tonight, this night, your soul is required of you. What is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate? 
the next teachings i'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate but what is the key the key is in romans chapter 5 and verse 17 another scripture that has not been properly understood by many romans chapter 5 verse 17 let's see where god will help us tonight he says for if by one man's offense that one man now um death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the bible calls the gift of righteousness then number two abundance abundance of grace the bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion You'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together I believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this whole earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he's going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed That means there are many things we are going to find out let me give you a few information 
should I say this hmm. some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth they had their dispensation are we together and the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture a similitude of that event happened to them they now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see when these spirits came you you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorized our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer do you know why many people get born again and stop there have you seen people that when you tell them oh i'm praying i'm on a program i'm on a this and that they look at you and say what that's a waste because they do not understand this so for them the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell and then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes the day you hear that trumpet do anything you want you are safe you see the theology that's a torturous and frustrating theology jesus said occupy till i come the word occupy does not mean build houses advance with those influence until i come there's something we are missing that's why our young ones are not interested in god again because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. Then the child is born again and say, okay, daddy, what next? He say, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say, I should add Wednesday. He say, oh, yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name, and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? Say, just continue coming to church. And he said, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. 
Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriage. He said, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under, there was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this, I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said, no, God could not keep us like this. Let's add flavor to it. Then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter. And say, let's just enjoy ourselves. And they say, we are occupying. You are not occupying. That's laziness and idleness. Are we together? So we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park. No. Both are wrong. Let me tell you, when you know the dominion mandate, you will be so busy you will not even, you will think age is not on your side. You see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency. They, they are, the issue of heaven is settled. See, let me tell you, um, we are going, I hope that one of this series will look at redemption and I'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not, is not supposed to be a frightful thing are we together the issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university when you have an admission letter it is possible to lose the admission letter but you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter no you have lectures is that true you are looking at something else Imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving. Where's my admission letter? And he opens the box and sees it and keeps it. And says, ah, thank you, Jesus. That's what we do with this rapture heaven thing. I'm not against it. You know me. I love people. I love souls. But having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective. That's why we don't treasure creativity. That's why we don't treasure dominion why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your rewards we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back uh, okay, let me not let's, let's not talk about this thing I don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. 
let me tell you let me i'm sharing with you the dominion mandate the coming of christ will not take believers unaware did you hear what i said the coming of christ i repeat will not take believers unaware please give me first thessalonians chapter 5 we are reading 1 to 4 first thessalonians chapter 5 is god helping us we're going to find someone and pray tonight first thessalonians chapter 5 but of the times please look up whether you are inside outside i want us to read it together okay i'll read it i'll tell you where to join but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write to you so he's talking to who brethren the church is that true verse 2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night many theologians well-meaning stop here and they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it the bible did not stop here it was paul himself who had his revelation uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation are we together verse 3 for when they shall say those who are without when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they 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 shall not escape if you're a child of god read the next verse with all your heart one two give us verse four please quickly one two read one more time so if that day overtakes you what is the sign that you are in darkness is that true the bible says we are the light of the world is that true it says but ye brethren I'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and I am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of Noah that day look at it it's in your bible I didn't write this that day will not overtake you as a thief why because the spirit of god is in us there is a salt covenant we are joined he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together you can never serve god when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell growing up there used to be a word that the old folks used to use assurance of not salvation assurance of salvation assurance of admission letter assurance of job that's why every time they give you a job they give you a little paper it's a token to prove to you that you are there the bible says god gave us his spirit as a proof as a seal of our redemption as a proof that we are now the begotten of him that he's no longer the firstborn um the only begotten he's now the first begotten of we the brethren are we together now so that god is not ashamed he's not ashamed to call us brethren but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry abba father It doesn't mean people don't backslide it doesn't mean people don't derail but i want you to know this there is a way we have been teaching i'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate 80 percent of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture and i'm not against books i know that there are books that have been written there are encounters am i boring you this is a foundation because several of us are living in fear you don't even know what to believe you are afraid you are sitting you are standing and you are wondering and they tell you if god comes and just when you are you know maybe shouting at somebody that's the end of it if he comes to meet you shouting you see that and so we walk in all kinds of fear even when we go before god there is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. 
It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves. True or false? A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go on. You see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, this day, you will be with me in paradise this day why for believing me for believing me for believing my innocence whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the spirit of god because no man can say jesus is lord except by the spirit to say jesus is lord does not mean j-e-s-u-s-i-s-l-o-r-d no that's not it the lordship of jesus is declared by revelation our announcing it is simply a product of it's not the reason no that's why the bible says in acts chapter 10 while they yet, peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on them there are so many things in my spirit we have to free ourselves the average christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what you should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children, and give some money to the church, and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire fear of heaven fear of rapture and there are books that keep coming every time you go online and just google it some of you oh i had a dream in that dream i saw rapture it may not be a lie the impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the holy spirit does not balance you you can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened and if god does not give you balance you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody brother be prepared i'm late for work i'm telling you that jesus is coming and you know and all and will make people feel guilty and pastors sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us i want to come and teach a series i had a seven days revelation about rapture i need to come and teach people and they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether god is really love there are those who have seen every pastor in hell listen to my message revelation and uh, what was it called reality of heaven and hell there are people who have seen satan found out that this is a very useful tool so those who started having these experiences satan can appear as an angel of light are we learning he now began to open people through experiences it is true that they left it it is true that they were somewhere it is true that they saw tears similitudes and they returned back to destroy people let me tell you something this issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know for many people this is our theology let's just keep watching the day the trumpet sounds if i make it glory to be to, be to jesus no so we preoccupy our minds and never do anything are we together we never do anything it has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries 
Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children he gave birth to the five children witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I'm going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters. If we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north. Northern Christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant. You know why? Because the Christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical. Are we together? And which was correct. But I'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth, people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives, their families. It's in the north, you can see one man with five, six children staying in a small room and he tells you, look, what is the use of building a house? I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When the other motto, when the buy the motto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing. And they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying, after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The one with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two. Um, profitable servant and those who spend their time multiplying it listen to what he told them he said well done good and faithful servant one of the synoptics says I appoint to you kingdoms that's the reward are we together Jesus is coming soon should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about Amvasi the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools 
because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like Catholic, Equa, you know, and all of that, they built schools. Is that true? They built hospitals. That, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate. Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people. So although they did not like their gospel, they still gave them land and gave them space. Today we are losing this and there are no good schools again. You cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly. The mission schools no longer have money and support. You know why? Because those to support them said, no, we are closer to rapture. There is no need supporting you. Let us just wait. Jesus is coming. Many of us here are already having that mindset. It must change tonight. Being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right God's nature, his rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why he calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits gift fruit the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first Adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he say in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth. The second is rebirth. 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 What is rebirth? An impartation of the nature and the image of Christ in that man. Hallelujah. These are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate. The Bible says this. Let me tell you what the Bible says. We are rounding up give give me please give me first peter chapter 1 verse 23 i think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um i'm looking for one i'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen 
this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever being born again or being saved as we call it it's not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man that mediator of the new covenant jesus himself the foundation of our work in the kingdom the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with jesus the pattern man the portrait jesus himself the bible says looking up to him he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regen because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's what the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus 
you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign god is counting on us to fulfill this mandate god is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is god's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why god gave apostles this is why god gave prophets listen this is why god gave evangelists are you seeing where we now come into the equation we were never there from beginning the apostolic ministry the prophetic ministry as we know it now is not an eternal ministry they are not eternal no jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle no when he sat upon that throne we still call him the apostle of our faith but his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done 
enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he won't call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the tv station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over one billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus you know that song i can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate god's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains fairs of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we're going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of gucci designers louis vuitton and all of those things are only the fringe benefits are we together they are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective so you don't rejoice and say look i am enjoying why look at my house look at five cars look at ten shoes look at trips abroad and you put them like crowns whoever talks like that does not know god and does not understand the dominion mandate so my pride and your pride is not in our cars have the cars but that's not the pride the pride is not that you are now wearing a hair 
of 250,000 that is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom your pride is that God gave me money and I worked the systems of the kingdom because I understood I would be a kingdom financier and I used that money I sponsored a TV station that now created a platform for people to receive Jesus for people to rise for people to be built I built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for God I was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call Christianity. We come and jump around and say, my faith is working. Why? I have 30 suits. Look at my picture with the owner of so, 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 and so oil company. And you gather them around and live your entire life. While you are old, you just say, you know, I lived a successful life. That's a wasted life. A life of purpose and a life of meaning. It's a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate. What is it? Take charge. What is it? expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the, the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign any ministry that wants to reproduce jesus's ministry and and by the way i hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry Jesus's ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven are we together now he said it is expedient that I go why so that the comforter will come it is to your advantage advantageous to you that I go because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha now that mantle that was on Jesus the spirit himself without measure so that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me, this is Jesus speaking, the Father sent me, I now send you, as the Father sent me, both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power, and every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. 
it is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of jesus but listen to me brothers and sisters if this does not happen we are wasting god's time and we are wasting the time of god's precious people that's why we prepare for all of the meetings especially the miracle service because you have not just come to watch a man you have come to see an extension of the ministry of jesus you have come with your requests you have come with your medical reports you have come with your pain you have come with all kinds of oppression you have come with all kinds of closed heaven and you're saying lord if you are the only one i know who can help me let me tell you your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 mark chapter 1 and verse 21 and they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusades. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority 
he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. Let me tell you this. When you command an unclean spirit and it goes, it is a big deal. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Doctors can treat sickness. They can cast out devils. Machines can show an elongated lung or heart, but it cannot show the spirit sitting there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These spirits are living entities. They can hear. They have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is, you share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. 
There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people serious is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain... The day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach. And you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service served? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils listen carefully i expect that tonight by his spirit he will lift you out of certain captivities lack of favor delay there are some of us who are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with matchet and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. 
but when the spirit component comes let me tell you this god never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted a spirit entity must assist you even you if you meet a herbalist that herbalist is not alone there is a spirit assisting him you see that yes don't walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without a spirit what else will i be doing but with god with god all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Habba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in zaria it will work in lagos it will work in london it will work in saudi arabia it will work everywhere are we together the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay God I know you will bless me in the name of Jesus may God lift you amen I just, well, it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah I believe the Lord I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you are oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life I want you to be tired and say God will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen I present to you the same God yesterday today forever I present to you the same healer yesterday today forever I present to you the same deliverer I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child I present to you the one who can give you influence can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder a specimen an epistle of his hand that's the God I present to you I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory 
ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh, no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain your hands I want to pray the Lord is starting tonight with an impartation there is an impartation of the grace for favor this is what the Lord is telling me the grace for favor the grace I'm about to pray for favor Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. And those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receiving right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve I say it again in the name of Jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry I release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of Jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that the men that will show up in your life to validate the grace for favor I prophesy them upon you now I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you hallelujah hallelujah there is the grace for favor those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that 
had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me? I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor. I said, let's do an experiment. I told him, I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and he went. Brothers and sisters, on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said, his uncle, that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you? Enough to see that you rise. It takes favor. Can I pray that prayer for you again? In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, you have done your best. You have done your efforts. You have struggled. It's almost killing you now. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace for favor. May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did 
not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's Nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving now practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute I want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate Lord I release favor concerning this job pray I release favor I release favor favor concerning my building project Like a shield, you surround us with favor like a shield. Pray, make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Favor like a shield. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. hallelujah listen let me tell you the truth you see ba this prayer you are praying if this prayer is truly answered in your life this is how you will stand what is this this favor prayer you see there are people who have touched up this favor they can tell you favor is fearful in its operation is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me 
let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey jimmy i want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is i want to keep blessing you i want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because the lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you're on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are it's a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek god when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give god your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone, overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come. Thy will be. 
the Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus. Remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 Shabalaka Baradushina. A new season. Sheke de Balaka Rokatosi Abatata. Leka Parakatosa da Brashana Balanaba. Leka Prosta da Barusha. A new season. of the spirit is around this area a new season a new season god is breaking something here a new season a new season a new season someone is entering it right now a new season a new season young lady you are entering a new season a new season by the spirit a new season a new season a new season, a new season. A new season something is breaking breaking i don't need to walk everywhere i'm just walking as the holy ghost is leading me a new season something is breaking 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 a new season there is a cloud of glory there is a cloud of glory a new season no force can stand it in your life there is an anointing here there is an anointing here a new season something is breaking here right now in the name of Jesus something is breaking here in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus receive it something is leaving you something is leaving you it must go shake it take it take it take it shake it take it take it and take a name of new season new season I stretch my hand, something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you, breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit, leave that lady now. In the name of Jesus.
It's time to command every force. Every spirit. I'm going to pray for you. Listen. Listen. As I pray for you, listen. It doesn't matter where you are. Provided there is a spirit entity that is waging war in your life. Let me tell you the truth. By the God whom I serve, as I make this declaration, the words will live like a sword from me and it will come and create that separation. I want you to bring them out. Overflow one, two, three, wherever. In the mighty name of Jesus, the God of Jeshurun, I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny, as you count three, as you count Jesus, at the count of three, let there be deliverance. One, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. Witchcraft, manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family covenanted Waters covenanted to the air to trees. I set you free now. And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you that you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three, just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough, massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, 
everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three supernatural liberty supernatural liberty and outpouring of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please I want to pray the Lord is showing me something that is very interesting the Lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every September somebody must die every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus lift your hands you don't have to ask whether or not you are involved don't worry the anointing will look for you I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do one two get ready three the chain of cycles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um, please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir I want to pray for you I don't know whether you came here for us Yes, you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming. i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh yes, uh, is that true yes sir looking at you and i'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes sir that thing is a charm yes sir. it's not half it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes sir huh? yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes sir it's not going to solve your problem yes sir the people doing it are well meaning yes sir but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes sir yes sir thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes sir can i pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that we wouldn't destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die 
in the name of Jesus I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please your name is Agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from Calabar huh are you hearing what I'm saying yes, I have to pray for you where are you from cross river you are from cross river yes sir. Come. I must pray for you Kai. there is somebody the Lord is setting the person free I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person you are here now in the name that is above all names I'm serious don't think I'm just hyping you in the name of Jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You are a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you. Eh? I love you and that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 i'm standing and i'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the lord is saying uproot it i uproot this thing now in the name of jesus christ i uproot it now the spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway. And I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopa Karyakata, I command an uprooting. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the lord wants to help you
Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, bad luck be gone now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come, my dear. Let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some... My spirit is heavy to prophesy, but because we have to... I want us to pray for the sick so that I can just make those declarations. We may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy, but I'm telling you, God wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of jesus i pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves jesus yes sir in the name of jesus christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? In the name of, is she married? Huh? In no. the name of uh, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ, may God help you. Mama, come, let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? Come. Boy, come. I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him. This is a small boy. Boy, how are you? The, the boy doesn't even know. But I'm going to pray for him. Samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day. When Eli, he was just an innocent boy. I'm going to pray for him. Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house, wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord. But this, this cause of hardship... Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Uh, lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this. The month of April is your month of strange breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. The month of April is your month of breakthrough. Azuka, come. Lift the camera first. Let me pray for you and then you keep the camera. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you. And this project is going to lift you. This is something that has to do with your snapshot. But God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ 
We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting God for healing and miracle. Let me pray for this lady. How many of you have your prayer request? Now lift it up, ushers, your prayer request. Those online, make sure we collect it. This, this lady, let me have her hands. Lord Jesus, let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently she'll be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please will be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if i want to throw up is the spirit of prophecy there's there's something that the lord is putting in my spirit to release and that's why i want to pray for the sick quickly so that we'll pray this prophecy if we do this i'm satisfied in this service we have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time hallelujah jesus someone please help with collecting the request make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody did father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taken away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier my beautifier you have taken away taking away the shame taking away the pain The pain. Taking away the pain, make me just like you. Me just like oh, you. my beautiful, my beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain.
keep on light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit stretch your hands here begin to pray in the spirit Presented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer 
the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need. And on the strength of the grace that only comes from you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The resurrected lamb. The one who is most victorious. I prophesy and I turn every request here. To become a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I walk through these requests. In the name of Jesus. That is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge. Every challenge. No matter what it is, I decree and declare. That the grace to triumph above it is released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. The Bible says, no weeping endures for a night. It says, but joy comes with the morning. I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every manifestation of delay in your life 
others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by God to bless you 
and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I cleared the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you hallelujah we're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tear that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.